हेलो स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज डॉक्टर वैशाली राजूरकर असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन डी जी रूपारेल कॉलेज इन दिस वीडियो वी लर्न सम कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ क्वालिटिटिव एनालिसिस इन दिस मॉड्यूल यू आर एबल टू रिकॉग्नाइज कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ केमिकल एनालिसिस दैट इज क्वालिटेटिव एंड क्वान्टिटेटिव एनालिसिस टाइप्स ऑफ क्वालिटेटिव एनालिसिस एंड वन ऑफ द प्रिंसिपल ऑफ क्वालिटेटिव एनालिसिस दैट इज सोल्यूबिलिटी प्रोडक्ट एंड वेरियस एप्लीकेशन ऑफ सोल्यूबिलिटी प्रोडक्ट स्टूडेंट्स वी नो दैट केमिकल एनालिसिस इन्वॉल्व वेरियस केमिकल प्रोसेसेस एंड ऑपरेशन विच आर कैरिड आउट टू आइडेंटिफाई द सब्सटेंस और टू डिटरमाइन इट्स कंपोजिशन so identification and estimation of substances are the two main aspects of chemical analysis identification and finding out the constituents of a substance is nothing but qualitative analysis estimation of exact amount of constituent of substance is nothing but quantitative analysis in other words qualitative analysis finds out what is present and quantitative analysis finds out how much is present qualitative analysis usually proceeds quantitative analysis as the contents of the substance have to be identified and then only they can be estimated in qualitative analysis identification of substances are carried out by using various tests like dry test wet test action of reagents etc when a chemical change is carried out by heating a solid substance alone or by mixing with other substances then it is called as dry test and if chemical change is brought about by mixing the solutions of the substances and reagents then it is called wet test the solution of the substance under identification when subjected to the action of known substances and changed into new compound with distinct known properties from the resulting new compound the substance can be identified before that the distinct or known properties uh, must be known so we'll take one example over here when a solution of calcium chloride mixed with ammonium carbonate a white insoluble salt is formed this white insoluble calcium carbonate uh, ppt is amorphous in nature and insoluble in water so by knowing the amorphous nature and insoluble by knowing these proper these two properties we come to the conclusion that the salt or solution must have a salt of calcium ion so the white salt of amorphous and insolubility in water gives us idea about the presence of calcium ions in a particular test solution here ammonium carbonate acts as a reagent and uh, this reagent we use to identify the calcium ions in a solution the form ammonium chloride is a byproduct formed by the reaction with ammonium carbonate the amount of substance what we use for qualitative analysis depending upon that amount the qualitative analysis can be divided into five main types the first one is macro analysis here the amount of substance used for analysis is about 0.5 to 1 gram or if liquid substance is there we can use up to 20 to 30 cm cube of that liquid substance this method is very easy to follow in a laboratory but here we use large amount large quantity of chemicals so it causes wastage of chemicals and creates more gas 
gases evolute so causes gases uh, environmental laboratory pollution the next one is semi micro analysis in semi micro analysis the substance used for analysis is about 0.05 to 0.1 grams and if in case of liquid sample is there we'll use up to 10 cm cube of that liquid sample this analysis having some advantages over macro analysis because uh, this the uh, this semi micro analysis gives equally reliable results with careful working so here we reduce large consumption of chemical uh chemicals in a laboratory even we can avoid the atmospheric pollution due to gases evolutes in a semi micro analysis here also we save the time because in semi micro analysis we use centrifuge machine which immediately separates the precipitate from the centrifugate or other solution the third type is micro analysis in this type the Uh, analysis uh, in this analysis the amount of substance used is about 0.1 01 to 0.05 gram or about 1 cm cube, cube of liquid sample can be used the micro analysis uh, can be done by using micro crystallographic method or by using spot test or drop method this analysis micro analysis can be used for research purpose the next one is ultra micro analysis and fifth one is trace analysis in both the analysis the amount of substance used for analysis is in very less quantity about uh, or less than 1 mg of substance can be used for ultra micro analysis and very very less than 0.1 mg of substance can be used for press analysis both the analysis are very useful or can be done by micro crystallographic method or drop method both the methods can be used in research and development purpose qualitative analysis based on two principles that is solubility product and common ion effect in this video we'll focus on solubility product only the so, dear students please tell me what is the solubility of a compound yes solubility is the ability of a solid liquid or gaseous chemical substances to dissolve in a particular solvent and form a solution the solubility of a substance fundamentally depends on solvent used as well as temperature of the solvent and pressure what we apply so solubility uh, is expressed in grams per dm cube or moles per dm cube now coming to the point in solubility product some ionic compounds like uh, silver chloride lead sulfate barium sulfate have very low solubility in water such salts are called sparingly soluble salts so we consider a sparingly soluble salt say ab so ab dissolved in water in a very small quantity it dissolves in water whatever amount it dissolves in water that amount dissociates so as a strong electrolyte dissolved part ionizes completely and an equilibrium exists between ionized and unionized part of a salt that is here ab coming with unionized part of ab coming with uh, equilibrium with un with ionized part of a plus and b minus ion so by applying law of mass action the equilibrium constant k is equal to concentration of a plus into concentration of b minus means ionized part divided by concentration of 
unionized salt AB. Now see here square brackets indicates the active masses of the species and generally molar concentrations are considered, uh, uh, considered as active masses and indicated in a square bracket. Now see here AB is a sparingly soluble salt. So whatever the amount it get dissolved, it form a saturated solution. So as a saturated salt, as a saturated solution, the concentration of this unionized salt can be considered as a constant over here. So this concentration of unionized part when we will take towards left hand side, this uh, proportionality constant K into concentration of AB means K into constant, saturated constant, sparingly soluble salt constant is equal to concentration of ionized cations and anions. Now see here K is a proportionality constant and this constant is coming by saturated salt solution. So we can say this is the constant of sparingly soluble salt. So here Ksp, so it becomes Ksp. So Ksp is a solubility product of sparingly soluble salt A and B. This means that the equilibrium in a saturated solution, the product of ionic concentrations is constant at a given temperature and the constant product of ionic concentration A plus and B plus, uh, B minus is called solubility product. So, Ksp becomes concentration of A plus into concentration of B minus. Means here the equilibrium in a saturated solution, the product of ionic concentrations is constant at a given temperature and constant product of ionic concentrations, uh, concentration of A plus into concentration of B plus is nothing but solubility product. We will take another example, a salt like MQAR, M, Q number of M ions and R number of A ions involved in a salt formation. So, after dissociation of this MQAR, we will get Q number of M plus ion and R number of A minus ion. So, the Ksp becomes concentration of M plus raised to power Q into concentration of A minus raised to power R. Okay. So, the solubility product uh, Ksp for a substance, for such substance may be defined as the product of molar concentrations or even activities of the constituent ions raised to appropriate powers depending on the number of ions in a saturated solution of the substance at a given temperature. Okay, so such solubility products or uh, uh, some expressions of solubility products of some salts like barium sulfate. Here barium sulfate gives one mole of barium 2 plus and 1 mole of sulfate 2 minus ion. So, Ksp becomes concentration of Ba2 plus into concentration of SO4 2 minus. But in case of silver sulfate, 2 moles of silver ion and 1 mole of sulfate ion will form. So, here Ksp becomes concentration of silver ion raised to power 2 because 2 moles Ag plus will form into concentration of SO4 2 minus ion. Now see Ksp value of salts gives an idea of the extent of dissolution of salt. Even each salt has its own solubility product values. We will take another example. So Ksp value of silver chloride is 1 into 10 raised to minus 10. Now see Ksp value of silver chloride is 1 into 10 raised to minus 10 means in a saturated solution of uh, silver chloride at 298 Kelvin temperature, 
the product of concentration of silver ions and chloride ions is equal to 1 into 10 raised to minus 10. Means solubility product of silver chloride is Ksp is equal to concentration of Ag plus into concentration of Cl minus is equal to 1.0 into 10 raised to minus 10. Now see the precipitate of AgCl silver chloride takes place when we add a solution of silver nitrate in a another solution which contains chloride ions. Okay. When AgCl will form? When the value of see AgNO3 after addition in a chloride ion solution it form Ag plus and NO3 minus ions. So by the presence of Ag plus ion this chloride ions from the solution get precipitated. But when precipitate happen if the value of concentration of Ag plus and Cl minus ion exceeds the value of solubility product of silver chloride. That is the value or concentration of Ag plus and Cl minus iron when exceeds the concentration, exceeds the value 1 into 10 raised to minus 10. That time will get the precipitate of AgCl. So get this point. So solubility product can be used to calculate the extent of dissolution of salt. So various or different salts having different solubility products. So solubility products having wide applications uh, in calculation of solubility of an electrolyte or the concentration of its ions in its saturated solutions. Solubility product also used to predict the conditions under which a precipitate of an electrolyte may be expected to form. Also solubility product used to predict the conditions under which a solution of electrolyte may be expected to dissolve. So thank you very much.